wonderful listeners. Welcome to Property Space. I'm Shelvin. This is where we're going to dive into inspiring property conversation with remarkable individuals like Zen today. Um, I'm your host, I'm Shelvin, and today's episode is extra special uh, because we have Zen joining us. Uh, big welcome. She's the regional director and head of China of Cellboy, um, one of the leading developers in Manchester, UK. And I believe all of us would agree that uh, nowadays, Manchester has been getting extremely popular and perhaps even more talk about than any a few other uh, global cities in the world uh, as an investment hotspot. So in today's discussion, uh, we will gain valuable insights from Zend in regards to fundamental strength uh, that Manchester can offer and how it climbs its way as a world-class city. So let's get ready for an insightful discussion and engaging conversation. Let's jump right in. Question number one. Okay. Drum roll. It's like you an interview, but don't worry. You can answer anything. So okay. to kick things off, could you provide our listeners with an introduction um, to uh, introduction of Cell Boy and the unique aspects that set Cell Foot Boys apart in the UK real estate market? Okay, so Cellboy, we're a leading um, developer in the Northwest. We generally like to do placemaking schemes. Mm. So I like to refer to ourselves as a placemaking developer. But how we came about the name Cellboy is that we're essentially Salford boys. Yeah. So our two founders, Fred, Dunn, it's and cute, Simon actually. Smile, yes. Mm. They're Salfordians, they're Salford boys. So it started with us wanting to give back to the city. So mm. when we build in Manchester, there's a lot of pride because we want to give back something that we want to see in our home city. So you will see that we do build a lot of things with a lot of heart. Mm. We put in amenities that people will use, not amenities that sell. Yeah. So I think that's the main differentiating factor. Agree. And um, I first started working with Cellboy from 2017 on the first scheme called Black Friars. Mm. At that point, it was a... We would call it condominium complex in Southeast yeah, Asia. La, yeah, la. It's a condominium in context as well. Yes. Yeah, condo complex. Yeah. So it was a condominium complex that the market had not seen before because mm. anything before that that came onto the market was probably six, seven years before that. Mm. So um, we had, we put in a gym, we put in a communal laundrette and that's actually a very important, a very interesting and unique concept. So this, this sort of additional features were not present back then? Yes, it was not present back then. Oh. In fact, this communal laundrette was actually an idea that Fred had when he visited New York and he liked the idea. Mm. And he was like, oh, I've not seen anything in my home like that. Mm. So I want to put a communal laundrette in where the residents can go there and connect, can mm. go there and relax and get to know each other within the community. So oh. that's why I say we are a placemaking developer and we do bring community master plans onto mm. into the city that mm. we love very much. So um, for Cellboy as well, we are actually a joint venture specialist. So what I mean by that is that our history goes way back to the financial crisis in 2008, where we actually started lending first. Mm. So we were actually doing development funding to a lot of developers in the UK I see. who would bring a lot of proposals to us on how they would build maybe like four freehold townhouses up to like a 40-story skyscraper in the UK. Were they predominantly Manchester developer? No, across the whole of UK, we do funding. Okay. So we've got things in common wall which is a very popular mm. um holiday destination yes. it's like the it's like the bali pocket of um yes. uk yeah yes. so everyone goes there during the summer so we've got a whole beach resort that we're building there we've mm -hmm. got retirement homes we've got commercial mm. residential retail and we've actually also got fmb in our portfolio wow um, yes usain boat has dined in very one of our restaurants yes that's right mm. so um we've got a very big portfolio which is why when we build we've got economies of scale Mm. And aside from being a joint venture specialist where we do development funding, because we've seen so many proposals from RESI commercial developers, that's how we got so much information and so much experience and expertise coming into real estate development ourselves mm. later on. And also, um, we've got our own construction team called Domis. So yeah, Domis yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I everywhere shared that. Now. Yes, mm -hmm. so uh, yes, they are everywhere yeah, now. They're yeah. building for a lot of prominent developers in the yeah. UK. Mm. We're known for our build quality and we're known for being fast. So I think this is something that's very interesting to share because during times like COVID or SARS, you know, um, times like that, development completion is always an issue because yes. costs are hard to control. Mm. 
But when you can't your outpace own... inflation. Correct. Sometimes. Correct. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. So the cost of materials, when I build a development, it's got so many different cost factors involved. So then it affects pricing. Mm. But we don't have that problem. And I'm very proud to share that we always complete on time, if not earlier, because we've got our own construction team mm. and we're very involved from the start. When we brainstorm a mm. development, what do we want to see in the development? Mm. So our founders actually, our founders actually very involved in the development planning from the start because mm. What Simon always says is that when we build something, can he see himself and his wife and his four beautiful children living inside? Yeah. So if it's a yes, then we know this is something we yeah, want to bring. Yeah, that's very important. Yes. It's a building for people who want to live in. Correct. Instead of just renting it or there's no future purpose Correct. in the next 10, 20 years. But yeah, it's important for the founder to be involved in yes. the very beginning of the placemaking. That's right. So I'm not saying this because I'm biased because I'm from Salboy, but I do think that we do take pride and we have a heart in everything that we do. Mm. So it makes us less commercialized in a sense and we're, we're very relatable. Mm. Yeah. And then, so with our own construction team, we deliver on time, if not earlier, we manage our costs very well. If you've got any issues as well, you know that you can come to us. We are really one-stop service mm. because uh, from point of delivering this scheme, coming up with the idea, deciding on the design. We've got our own architects as well. Mm. And we do work with renowned architects, world-class architects. Right. So whenever we bring something onto the market, it's something that we've not seen before. So we yeah. always challenge ourselves with every single scheme. You've been very familiar yes. with our stock. So you've seen how we've can evolved. testify that. Correct. <laughs> so you've seen how we've evolved from our first scheme, Black Friars, mm. to how we did Burlington Square that sold very mm. well because it was a private residential compound within an area that had a lot of student accommodation and mm. we, we weren't able to find something like that there. Mm. And then we have Crescent that's very yep. beautiful. Our headquarters is in Crescent now. We've mm. moved on to, uh, to, to Crescent. Um, we've amalgamated a business. We're mm. moving from Birchwood to Crescent now. So we're closer to the city. Uh, we've got a beautiful sales suite there. And um, after Crescent, if you look at all our developments, we've got a very unique design concept. Yeah. So every single scheme has its own identity. You can't find the same thing twice. So when people say they want to wait on a cell boy scheme, you can wait, but you once you miss the boat and you miss the scheme, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I do agree on the point where you are highlighting how cell boy will do things differently. Yes. Uh, you tend to be, cell boy tend to be a pioneer in terms of place making, in terms of putting additional features in the development. I mean, cell, if I were to speak as a Redmond person and also as a UK property specialist, I've seen those concepts in London, but somehow back then, no one in Manchester can duplicate. Yes, that's and right. And to, to even improvise the concept, the development concept and direction, which create a lot of success yes. in London, in Manchester, no one did that until Sal Boy came in. Mm -hmm. And then I look at the, the blueprint of the development, um, the map, the master plan, everything. I was just like, my God, you guys are different. You guys are really building a community. You're not yes. just building homes. You're building homes, retail, commercial, schools, everything comes in yes. one place. So this is where we always talk about community living. You foster the sense of community because you want to be, be feeling at home at where you live. And then that's where we also relate this to master plan development in, in KL, for example. That's how we actually draw references. Yes. Like Desa Park City, I'm sure all of us talk about this. It was a quarry site. No one goes there back then until developer came in and proposed building beautiful homes on the ex-quarry site. Who would have imagined? And now they are, boom, huge success. And that's what Cell Boy is striving to be one of those place-making experts. Yes. Hence why I bought one as well. So <laughs> not, <clears throat> not trying to promote, but I truly believe in Cell Boy's visions. And also I've seen how good they are in terms of workmanship. So I think in terms of notable milestones and achievement for Cell Boy, because you guys are not in the market for a super long time, mm. but you have already achieved quite a few strong following yes. uh, in the past couple of years. Yes. Um, the, for me, the milestone that you guys have set in is being different and being one of the experts in terms of providing luxury plus casual plus everything basically is vibing like the development is vibing like if you are talking about gen z term it's giving everything <laughs> is giving <laughs> hence why i bought into one of the, the developments that cellboy just recently launched because everything in the scheme is giving 
So we've developed 3,500 of our homes now mm. in the recent years. Mm-hmm. And then with upcoming completions in March and April in two of our schemes, Viaducts and Victoria House, mm. our flagship developments, Viaducts, obviously. Yes. I'll yeah. go more into detail after this. Yeah. But um, we're delivering close to another 500 units. Fantastic. And also, we've got about one billion pounds in pi- development pipeline at the moment. One billion. So we wow. are the fastest growing Northwest develop- Northern developer, I would say. But can you? Is it safe to say that Cellboy is probably building the most in in the entire Manchester? I resi- would say if you go landscape? to the city now, if mm. you go to the, so Manchester's changed so much. Yeah. In the last seven, five to seven years, yes. if you go there now. The whole city has changed. The whole lifestyles change. Quality of living, livability's changed drastically. Mm. There's a lot so, more to do in the city yes. in comparison to maybe and eight years back, nine yes. years back. And yeah. I love being there because you make every turn. You do see a cell boy hoarding. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. I was like, hey, cell boy, hey, cell boy, hey, don't miss. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so correct. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're everywhere. So we are, if you look at all the pipeline across Manchester at the moment, mm. I would say we are the most active in the city centre. Because um, I've seen all the stock that's coming up. Mm. We've got a lot of activity in the north part of the city, mm. northern, perhaps northward of the city and then yeah. southward. But I would say within the city centre, we are definitely the most prominent. Yes, mm. I can I can show a lot of videos and pictures later on uh, on a separate basis. I think we can jump into the next questions. Oh, this is exciting. So, the UK real estate market is constantly evolving, I'm sure. We all can say that and we all agree that. And given how popular Manchester is as an investment hotspot, um, the city experiences exciting yet tremendous transformation, like what you just mentioned. As a leading developer in Manchester, how do cell boys stay ahead of current market trends? And can you share any insights into the current landscape of Manchester property market that you find unique? exciting or challenging? I think most importantly is that we're not an overseas investor trying to go into the market. Mm. So we know what the local market wants. If you look at our type of stock that we build, Mm. we do build larger units. That's right. Yes. And we do appeal to the owner occupier a lot more. Correct. So one of my favorite things that I like to highlight is that when we plan units, um, the layouts, right? Mm. We always want to see is this more investor type stock or Mm. is this appealing to the home user. So I would say that's one that sets us apart. Second is that when we build, um, because we know the market so well, Mm. we know where there's definitely going to be an appreciation and because of how much we give back to the city. So uh, we are also related to Bad Fred, which is the largest independent bookmaker in the UK. Mm -hmm. And we give back (laughs) a lot to society. Exactly. And Selboy, we actually are sponsoring Salford City Football Club. Mm. So Salford City Football Club is actually managed by the class of 92 from (laughs) Manchester United. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So that's Uh, why if you go onto social media, you will see that David Beckham sent us a a video to congratulate us last year. That's right. So we are very, we are very active in the local community, the local scene and I think that's something that sets us apart from other developers as well and because we know what the locals want what there is what what needs are there Mm. and we always we always look into where the demand is so if you look at the type of stock that we bring onto the market we've got our one bit strength always sell out the moment we release them I suppose you also would take note on the potential or the largest age group that you guys appeal to age group and demand yes the need the need is very important because when we buy Okay, so when I buy a property in the UK, I will think like an overseas investor. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, yeah, so as a, as a <clears throat> Singaporean, as a Malaysian, we've got very different buying trends, correct? Yes. Yes, compared agree. to someone that's a local in the UK. I agree. So then we'll look at the one bids, we'll look at the price point, we'll mm. look at the price jump from a one bid to a two bid. Mm. But then from a local perspective, a two bid is, is very usable. The Carver. capital appreciation for two correct. Capital appreciation wise for two bid also makes more sense. Mm. So then we have to see from a local perspective, where is the demand? Mm. Because when we want to invest in a market from an overseas investor point of view, when one invests in a market, we want to chase something that has a solid demand because that's going to withhold the the strength. It's going to determine how resilient this investment is. That's right. Because it's not just... 
speculation yeah. or just like a, a, a buying trend where people come in. It has to be in. an evergreen solution. Correct. Yeah. That's right. And it has to be workable in the entire Sustainable investment horizon. Sustainable as well. That's right. Yeah. So so we always know, so for example, two beds are in demand. Mm. But then if you look at three beds in the city centre, we do build lesser of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because city centre, the demand's on in, in, in one bed and two beds. Yes. Yes. So... Um, this is a very interesting trend that we noticed back in 2017 18. Mm. There were a lot of people that were willing to pay rent to share a two bed because they've got a proper living room, a balcony. Right. And if they shared, if they, for example, two tenants, if let's say you and me, mm. we went to the city centre and we were like, okay, let's not rent a one bed ourselves. Mm. But if we shared our rent yeah. and we rented a two bed, we've got a bigger space. But yeah. the amount of money that I put in and you put uh, in would be lesser. lesser. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Yeah. So, there was, there was that trend going on in Manchester. Okay. And then over time, it started to evolve more and more people wanted to own their own apartments in the city centre. Mm. Correct. So I would say for us, why do we still go to the city centres? Because firstly, it's very hard to mm. get land in yeah. the city centre. Yeah. But because of how much we give back and how active we are locally, we always get the best spots. Mm. So if you look at all our development all our developments, we are in very prime areas. Very, very, very Correct. strategically located. Correct. I can't quite divulge it where our next development pipeline is going to be mm. for next year and, mm. and beyond. But we've just sh um, shook hands on a very good deal within city centre. Mm. So we are still building in prime areas. Okay. And also, every single city that you invest in globally, the consistent trend that goes on is that it will always start pricing out from the city. Yes. So, the golden... It all starts from there. Correct. The golden phrase is always location, location, location. location. Well, some people still might debate it, but in the real estate world, it is the concept. That's yes, lo the logic that's that right. works for us. That's right. So if you look at our stock in um, Clooney Mews, London, yep. Court, yep. that's also prime London. Yep. Um, and then if you look at Manchester stock, we were also right in the city. So I would say that we've got an edge over mm. um, a lot of other stock because we do build in very good locations mm -hmm. because we're able to get land there mm. and we're not just building like one standalone block we yeah. do proper development compounds that people can live if mm. not we build lifestyle destinations where people go and live work and play yeah so then you've got that market there that's gonna continue in years to come you will see that it's gonna become a part of the city an important an important destination within the city yeah yeah. yeah. So I would say we've got that's one of the things that we are we, we really take pride in. Yeah. So in terms of trends, we know where's gonna have that capital uplift. Mm. We know what the locals want. Mm. We know what type of units they want to buy. Mm. We know what pricing to price it at. Mm -hmm. And we do not come uh, we do not we we give we give a lot more than we we always overspec our schemes, I would say. I would, yes, I've seen that. Yes, we don't compromise it's, on quality. I look at the, the show units uh, in one of the developments, Cell Boys development. I was like, oh my God, that's like top notch specs. But the price, mm, very affordable. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's yeah, right. that's that's my, my, that's real talk. That's not, not even a sales so talk. A lot of our schemes in recent years are all award winning developments. Mm. And we consecutively won um, development, developer award, best mm. developer award. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, um, substance, I think we've yeah. got, not got an issue. Lah. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. So I think to, to sum it up, I think in terms of the current market trend in Manchester that Cellboy has noticed and manage to deliver is more on the size and the type of the bedroom owners occupy a stock and i think in, even when it comes to amenities there's quite a life you are correct yeah it's a game changer as well i think back correct. then it was just not it's zero amenities development but now they're building yes. like um clubhouse facility I, yes clubhouse facility so yeah. i do want to share a bit about our development amenities because mm. so amenities wise viaducts we did do a sort of like a rebranding we added a yoga studio a mm. karaoke room so oh i am God, excited about that correct i'm excited <laughs> Let's about <go>. that <laughs> a really beautiful mm. pool so mm. architectural wise it is the design is um to die for award mm. meaning as well so we've got a very beautiful pull under historical listed arches wow. right in Dean's Gate, M1 Dean's Gate. Eh? Um, and then, so that's Viaducts. That's mm. why it sold so well. And so then, much corrected. Correct. Yeah. And then after that, when COVID happened, we realized the need for co-working spaces, yes. working lounges. So you'll find that very 
um, predominant in our recent schemes. Yeah. We've got a lot of co-working spaces because now lifestyle-wise, hybrid working is a thing. Mm. People work from home. Yes. But when you work from home, for example, I've got a dog. I can't have him barking at the back all the time, <laughs> right? And people with children. Yeah. So that's why when we, that's what I meant at the start of this podcast. We built and we give amenities that people will use, that we yeah. will use ourselves, not yeah. develop, not amenities because themselves. Because our world is changing, it's constantly evolving in terms Correct. of lifestyle needs. Correct. And then obviously work from home situation. I think a lot of people always assume that work from home is going to be an everlasting Correct. solution moving forward. But now a lot of people are also going back yes. to the office. But at the same time, they have the hybrid lifestyle, like Correct. going back to the office two or three days a week, but the rest of the week, they're going to use the co-working lounge yes. in the apartment of, of, of where they, they stay. Right. So I think this is something that, that Selba has managed to address and yes. deliver. Um, the same goes to other developers as well, but I think you guys actually put a lot of emphasis on uh, quality of living. There's a lot of hard life. thought that goes into our schemes. Yeah. So for example, our recent development that we've launched, mm. um, Waterhouse Gardens, it's mm. got its own clubhouse. So yeah. clubhouse is a concept that's very it's popular very, in Southeast Asia. Yes, it is. Like I was a clubhouse user. Yes. I, I wouldn't have thought that seeing a clubhouse facility in a condominium complex in Manchester, never, exactly. never in my exactly. life. Exactly. Because we, for us, so and and the best part is that these clubhouse facilities, they're mm. part of the service charge, the part of the maintenance. You don't yes. have to pay extra to use it. Yeah. So we've got a beautiful pool, jacuzzi, mm. spa sauna. We've got a zen garden. We've mm. got half a basketball court indoor within yeah. our scheme that can allow us a squash court. Yeah, it's so, mental, man, and, to have a basketball yes, court. <laughs> and we've got a library, a proper working space. Mm. And then we've also got a private dining room where you can actually hire your own celebrity chef to come in. We've oh. got a back room to service that so mm. they can actually cook and prepare food. Mm. You can host your friends. So I would say this actually matches the livability and lifestyle quality in Manchester. Because yeah. Manchester's known um, for having the most number of celebrities, mm. footballers, because yep. we've got Man United oh, yeah. and Man City. Yeah. Yep. So, yes. So, but previously, the type of amenity and lifestyle, um, retail, mm. food, food and beverage, F&B offering in Manchester, I don't think it's really matched that need yeah. that is in Manchester. I, I think it was quite mediocre. I think there was no yes. excitement back then, yes. back in five, six years ago. Correct. But I think just recently, just before... The COVID, yes. things picked up from there. You're right. Uh, and then we start to see quite a trend, an up, uprising trend of time poor individuals in the area, in the city. Mm -hmm. Hence why amenities in the apartment is very important because they don't want to travel. Correct. They want to save time. Correct. They want to have got every activity done and covered in one building by itself without yes. going outside. So I think cell boy scheme actually serve a perfect purpose for time poor individuals, working class people, young professional, those who have standard and expectations, like me. <laughs> yes, exactly. Perfect. So I think, yes, uh, very, very good and insightful answer on question two. Now, question three, looking ahead, what do you envision for the future of real estate development in Manchester? Oh, that's a very big question. Future. In terms of trends, in terms of requirements of owner occupiers and investors, I think it's quite a very dynamic question. Yes, yes. Yeah. I do like to comment on um, global real estate trends mm. across cities, but I would say for Manchester. So if you look at from 2017, when we were doing Manchester, everyone mm. was talking about the Green Gate. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Like yes. a so-called hipster area. <laughs> so Green Gate regeneration mm. was a mixed-use regeneration that brought in retail, commercial, residential, and like you mentioned, Desa City Park. Mm. So, like these sort of um, regeneration, mm. you know, you're creating a whole new lifestyle destination for people to go work, live, and play, right? Yeah. So I would say, aside from these regenerations that are coming on, we've got Noma, we've got mm. Co-op that's gone there, Amazon mm. that's gone there, mm. and then Waterhouse Garden seats within Great Ducey Street regeneration. That's right. Uh, so that's another regeneration plan. So mm. Manchester City, you will see that it's expanding, mm. and if these are not enough to tell you that it's expanding up north, I can tell you that the city centers already expanded so they had a 650 million pound expansion mm. towards the west right uh, new bailey regeneration new bailey, yes. yes that's right yes yes correct and then booking.com's gone there oh. and then yes <laughs> headquarters yeah and then we had a 1.2 billion pound st john's regeneration mm. um also from the cbd mm. so dean skate we've 
they've expanded so much. Even HMRC signed a 25 year lease yeah. within the city center in Manchester. And HMRC, we know. I think this gate is quite built out, right? It is. So it's changed a lot in the recent years. Mm. Um, but you'll be surprised because mm. Viaduct is right in Dean's Gate. Yes. Yes. And yes. then we've also brought W Residences recently. That's been... Wow, that is phenomenal. That is it phenomenal. is phenomenal. I think we can share later on. We have set. Yeah. We have set a whole new level of quality, mm. branding, lifestyle, and also pricing mm. for w, when, we, when we did W Residences. And that development did so well. It's benchmark pricing, but also benchmark sales. Correct. Literally you benchmark right. take up rate. And most I, of the buyers are from the UK. Yes, I think yeah. I, I'm happy to share. So we've only got like 217 units in W residences that are mm. private residences. Um, but the week that we launched it, on a Monday, we brought it out. Yeah. Globally, we aligned our times. This is the time we're going to go on to the market. By Friday, mm. we were about 90 sales in. Oh my so, God. Yes. That's crazy. That never happens in KL. <laughs> <laughs> but the type of people that are buying this scheme mm. showed us that there is this need. They wanted yeah. these sort of five-star branded residents in and, Manchester. I remember you told me that on the day when you were sharing such great news that the take-up rate was phenomenal, was mental. And at the back of my head, I was thinking, could they be all just international buyers? No. I mean, well, surprisingly not. I think... Can I can I just assume it's going to be like seventy to eighty percent UK based on occupier? You are correct, actually, to say that yeah. because we so sell boy. One thing that sets us apart also because we've got so much links to the clubs and and all that. That's right. Yes. Um, we do have prominent uh, clients that yes. buy into our schemes, but yeah. of course, you know, non disclosure. We're not able to That's share right. who buys. But they are non figures. Yes. Popular so figures. yes. So I would say that the take up for our schemes um. Very good background, very good clientele. And mm. you know that when you've got people like that buying, I mean, these people, they are very mature investors. They already yeah. know where to put their monies. They yep. know how to They've make their money. They've done the a due diligence anyway. You're right. Yeah. Yes. So, and then um, building in the city centre where you've got commercial nearby, you've got like, you know, your rents are not going to be cheap. So you already yes. know that your tenant profile is mm. going to be very strong. Mm. So W Resident is one of the success that yes. Cellboy achieved last year, late last year, mm. uh, so to speak. Yes. Other than W Residence, what are the developments that have seen a significant take-up rate and you think that will also set the tone for the future landscape in Manchester yes. real estate? So Waterhouse Gardens is one that I mentioned mm -hmm. because the location itself is mm. just right next to the Victoria Station, which is mm. a transport hub in Manchester. Yep. Um, it takes you to London very, very conveniently. Yep. Yep. Um, and then also... It's walking distance. Correct. And mm. then we're right next to AO Arena as well. Mm. That's the largest indoor concert venue yep. in the UK, fourth largest in Europe. And those that international acts that have performed over there were including the likes of Harry Styles and maybe Coldplay, I think, if I'm not wrong. Yes, Correct me right. if I'm wrong. Yes, yes. And Westlife, Spice West Girls. Westlife, uh, Spice Girls. Yes. Those are really international acts. It's not just for the local uh, artists. It's actually a major concert uh, venue in but Manchester. they've also held car shows there. Mercedes did yeah. a car show there. They've also had tennis tournaments there. Mm. They've also got boxing matches there. Mm. So it is a lifestyle destination. Mm. But in that area, because it's a regeneration, like there's not, there, there was not proper residential compounds like this. And we're delivering 500 over units in this yep. whole area. Yep. So it will be a new lifestyle destination. And earlier when we mentioned about um, what we do as a developer, we're not just giving the amenity within the scheme. We've actually mm. built a beautiful park right outside 11 retail units. Yes. So we are part of the expansion, linking this this residential compound to mm. the public domain within the area. It's, so, a, it's a very inclusive sort of we are community because you're not, like I say, it's not just building homes, building you are correct. space, uh, four walls. Uh, we are actually building lifestyle. Yes. I think that's what Cellboy is, is, has place been thriving. Making. Correct. It's place making. And they have been always mentioning about place making because a lot of people still don't understand. Correct. They thought it would be just development mm. with some gardens, some parks and homes and that's it. But 
you have to build something that can create a future demand. If you want to have a good exit point, yes, yes, you're exit right. Exit strategy. You must buy something that a local want to stay. Correct. And, and coming back to the point of demand, mm. because Manchester College is right there. It just yeah. opened its new city campus in 2022, and then it got a 38 pound expansion plan approved the same year it mm. opened. Mm. So we know that that area there's there are going to be really exciting changes there. Mm. Um, so. Waterhouse Gardens is right across Manchester College and also because we're building a community, this whole area is going to change. Yep. Yes, it's going to change. We've got five phases the, of that. The, the Manchester uh, College City Campus is fairly new. Yes. Um, it's, it, it hasn't been there for a while, but I think just got, probably just got completed last year, early last year. Correct. So that actually generated a lot of footfall. It is. And you know how you want to go near the schools as much as possible because mm. education, good market, bad market, still necessary. Still necessary. Yeah, yes, exactly. correct. So bulletproof. if we, <laughs> correct, bulletproof, you're yeah. right. I love that word. Yeah. Because if you look at, for example, Imperial College, uh, Kensington, mm. South Ken in London, mm. last time one bid, 300,000 pounds. How yeah. to find now? Cannot it's more than 1.3 million pounds now. You can find, a, but you can find the toilet only. <laughs> correct. So previously, maybe 300,000 pounds yep. back then, 10, 15 years ago. Yes. Now it's, a, it's an old 10, 15 year one better for 1.3 over million pounds exactly so, guys exactly so mm. we want to go to the schools as near as possible so i think it's very exciting that we're right across the street from manchester college mm. um that's one of the schemes that i think it's very um has done very well it's mm. been very well received so far and then of course um for viaducts mm. um if you go onto the internet i'm sure mm. you've already read we are mm. aiming to build the tallest residential building yes for viaducts too yes exciting yes. news exactly very exciting news and then with victoria house also um we've got so many people because piccadilly has always predominantly been um it's the hub. correct it is mm. a hub but mm. they've got four regeneration plans there yeah yeah yes yeah. Yeah. in recent years correct so that whole area, a lot of built to rent, mm. but not much private residential. Yeah. So we always spot where is the next hot spot for not just investors, but people that want to have a home to live there yes. to service that area. Yeah. Mm. Good. Um, that pretty much sums up to close it off. Uh, I think we have got really good points uh, on the future trend in Manchester, uh, real estate market, and what you should buy in terms of the size, in terms of what sort of uh, development features, amenities. Um, we can save few more valuable contents in the next episode and stay tuned. So thank you Zen for joining us today. Thank I you. will see you in the next episode about Manchester again. Okay. Bye bye.